Ah. Ah. Friend good. Lynn bad. Spiritualism confusing. Hello. I'm Dr. Vitka from Dr. Vitka's Myths, Legends, and Lore, and today we're going to Lynn, Massachusetts, to High Rock Tower to explore a strange story of a real-life mad scientist who tried to create artificial life here in Massachusetts. Join us for this next strange story. Lynn, Massachusetts. Boston's neighboring blue-collar city, rapidly being gentrified, recently was named one of the best places to live in the greater Boston area. Despite that fact, the city of firsts, the Ocean City, is still mostly known by the age-old rhyme. Lin Lin, city of sin, you won't come out the way you went in. While the benefits and drawbacks of living in Lin are clearly visible, most locals have no idea that in the mid-1800s, Lynn was a hotbed of spiritualist activity. Spiritualism was a new religious movement entirely dedicated to communicating with the dead. People would receive messages from the dearly departed. Lynn had spiritualist camps and spiritualist retreats. And at one point, they even had a giant enchanted spiritualist toad statue. That makes Lynn the perfect place for our protagonist, John Murray Spear, to stage his great experiment. Born in Boston in 1804, Spear escaped an impoverished childhood. He grew up to be a respected Universalist minister. He didn't seem like the kind of person to create a monster. Spear championed progressive causes like women's rights, the abolition of slavery, and prison reform. People loved him. He seemed like a normal guy. There was no indication that he was going to create something strange. Spear didn't seem like the kind of person who would make an abomination. But that perception was about to change. While in Portland, Maine, giving a lecture against the evils of slavery, a racist mob beat Spear into a coma. Spear eventually recovered, but he was a different person now. He was changed. Spirits were giving him messages, and not just any spirits. These were ghosts of great ministers and heroes of the American Revolution. These ghosts had a mission for Spear. He was going to heal people. The ghosts sent him out to meet people with mysterious ailments. And despite having no doctor training whatsoever, Spear amazingly sometimes was able to heal these people. Spear also started showing up on college campuses and giving lectures of things he was completely unqualified to talk about. Yet somehow, the spirits had him making sense. Some professors were very impressed that Spear had encyclopedic knowledge of things he should have had no inkling about. Energized by his success, Spear gave himself fully over to the spirits and a new group of ghosts moved into his mind and body. But these weren't just any spirits. These were important spirits. Spear said this time Benjamin Franklin was talking to him, and possibly even Jesus Christ. This new group of ghosts had a new mission. He was going to build something for them, something they called new motive power, the electrical infant. It was something all right. What was it going to do? Well, this was going to heal the world. It would be perpetual motion. It would be unstoppable energy to power the world and heal the sick. Spear didn't know what he was doing, but he figured if Ben Franklin, Jesus, and the rest of who called themselves the Association of the Electrolyzers was telling him to do it, he'd be able to make it happen. He was going to build a new god, a super robot god. That was Spear's new goal. He was going to build the electrical infant. And build it, he did. The spiritualists of Lynn invited Spear to use their shed, which was right near where High Rock Tower is today, to start assembling his electrical infant. Spear acquired masses of electrical components, great big plates of metal, wires, big cogs and wheels and gears. He assembled it 
without any known mechanical or scientific knowledge. There was talk of pulling energy from the airs, wind, water, fire, earth, element talk like from Captain Planet. The idea was that all this stuff would somehow come together, guided by the invisible hand of the spirits. All of this mess assembled together was something to behold. While there are no photographs of it that exist, some contemporary accounts describe it as looking like a classic man-shaped robot. Others say it was just a jumble of parts on a table, a box with wires. Big globes of metal were made to harness the electricity from the air, like something out of a classic Frankenstein movie. This apparatus cost the equivalent of $80,000 in today's money. Somebody must have wanted Spear to succeed. Somehow this humble minister from Boston assembled a small fortune to help build new motive power. A woman in Boston fell pregnant, yet there was no baby inside her. Luckily, she was a spiritualist, and the spirits told her she was carrying the spark of life for the new motive power. She was to be the mother of the electrical infant. She found her way to Spears shack and began to play the role of the expectant mother. They called her the new Mary. For months, as Spear tinkered with his creation, she acted the part of the expectant mother. Nine months into the ordeal, it was time for the birth. Ben Franklin and the other ghost told Spear to don an elaborate robe covered with jewels and wires. People from all around the area gathered to watch the birth. The mother stepped forward. She started acting out the birth process, groaning and straining. People in attendance said it was a suggestive and shocking scene. After the final push, the room was silent. Not a soul moved. Was the electrical infant stillborn? But then, as quoted in the Boston Era newspaper, the thing moves! The electrical infant had been born. The paper said, the thing moved, but it never moved again. It was stillborn on the table. The electrical infant was dead, just a jumble of metal and wires and gems. Perhaps it had moved, or maybe it was just the wind. Maybe the excitement of the people in the room caused the illusion of motion. Whatever the case, for all of Spears' prayers and tinkering, for all the nursing of it that the new Mary tried to do, the new motive engine would not work. The new Mary eventually moved on, and so did the people of Lynn. They got out their pitchforks and torches and told Spear to pack it up. Spear left in a hurry. He thought he'd have better success in New York. He was invited to another spiritualist community, one which had even more spiritual energy than Massachusetts could have dreamed of. But when he got there, he met with a sad reception. They didn't want to deal with a Dr. Frankenstein. The new motive power was smashed. The robot messiah never got a chance. And that's the end of the sad story of the new motive power. Thank you for watching this most recent episode of Dr. Vitka's Myths, Legends, and Lore. We're back. It's been a while, but we've returned. As Dr. Frankenstein said, we are indeed alive. I don't know about you, but I'd certainly go to church much more often if I knew that my minister was trying to create artificial robots with a soul. This episode goes to show you that there's weird history hidden everywhere in New England. Are there stories you want us to cover? Please let us know. If you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. Now I'm going to go home and feed my own monster. <laughs>